Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the metal that eats glass. This is lithium. It's the lightest metal, so light that it floats on water very easily. You can see how light it is. It's stored in oil here. Watch how it floats. So the metal's actually floating in oil. <laughs> it's also very soft. Look how I can actually cut it with a butter knife. Then it's nice and shiny after I cut it. It would normally look like this if it weren't in the air, but when it's exposed to the air, it actually reacts with the nitrogen in the air. You can see after I cut it that it quickly turns this black color again. It's the only group one element that reacts spontaneously with nitrogen. Look how black it is now. I played with sodium a lot. This is a lot different than sodium. Sodium actually gets this white crust around it, not a black crust like this. So on the surface, it makes this lithium salt. If you were here with me, you would notice that when you smell it, it has a distinct smell of ammonia. That smell is coming from the water in the air reacting with the lithium salt on the surface giving off ammonia. But this isn't the coolest thing that you can do with lithium. Because it's an alkali metal like sodium, it really doesn't hold on to its outer electrons very well. So that when you drop it in water, it gives up its electrons to the hydrogen in the water to form hydrogen gas. <laughs> It's bubbling. Whoa! This gas bubbles off and can ignite. It isn't quite as dramatic as sodium, but still scary to get this stuff around water. See, but it doesn't explode like sodium. It just burns this pretty reddish pink color. With sodium, you get this distinct yellow color at 589 nanometers, but with lithium, you get peaks in the red end of the spectrum. <laughs> Look at that. But even cooler than this, lithium actually has a fairly low melting point at around 185 degrees Celsius. So you may be tempted to take some lithium and put it in a glass test tube to heat it up and watch it melt. For example, let's say I wanted to melt some of my lithium in a test tube like this, a glass test tube. Let's put it in here and see what happens when I melt it in here. Okay, so I'm gonna just get a torch and heat it up here. Should start to melt in a bit. Whoa. Whoa, even if I, after I remove the heat, it's still glowing red. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's getting red hot in there. Whoa. The lithium actually reacts with the glass. It gives off even more heat, driving the reaction even further. It's melting through the glass. Look on the bottom there. You can actually see the glass breaking. The lithium is actually reacting Whoa. with the glass, which is usually very inert. That's why we use it to store so many things. It's mostly made from silicon dioxide, but lithium can pull the oxygen out of the silicon dioxide molecules and make lithium dioxide. Look how cool this looks. Because it pulls the oxygen out of the glass, it makes the glass weaker as well, so it fails eventually. And what's weird is this doesn't happen with sodium, only lithium. It would seem like sodium would be more reactive because it reacts so much more violently with water, but it doesn't. The reason lithium reacts with the glass has to do with how small it is compared with sodium while still being an alkali metal. It can form very tight bonds. That's the reason it can react with nitrogen molecules, which have one of the strongest bonds of any two like atoms. You can even get lithium to burn in pure nitrogen. In the oxygen, it reacts just fine. It gets white hot. And I can even put it in the nitrogen gas and it still burns. even down inside of it, where it's actually really cold inside of there. It's still burning. But there's no way I could get a flame to light. So it's in complete nitrogen now and still glowing red hot. You can see it's still burning in there. And before we end, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts.
The land that they assign you is called a souvenir plot. It doesn't have to be a registered plot and can be sold for commemorative purposes or as a souvenir. Since the title Lord is not an official title and since you own the souvenir plot, they refer to their customers as Lords and Ladies. Their title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. They also plant a tree with every order and work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. These certificates make an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code the Action Lab, you get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash the Action Lab to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Remember, the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you're notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.